Okay, and we're on the show floor in UK Games Expo 2015, and I'm here at the Hawk War Games stand Hi. with Dave from Hawk War Games. Hi. Um, behind you is, uh, quite frankly, the amazingly beautiful dropship. Um, we might as well start with that since that's the main thing there. So, what can you tell us about the new game? Um, okay, well, Drop Zone Commander, uh, which is this is in scale with Drop Zone Commander, 10 mil scale uh, mass battle ground game. Uh, with dropships, there's a big heavy element of air combat in the game as well. Uh, this thing is a is a monster. It's, it's a display piece and it's going to be used for artwork and some green screen video, stuff like that. It's a Hollywood kind of studio size and detail level. Uh, I built it for a display piece largely because I wanted, wanted to, to be honest. Um, I had fun building it. Uh, but we're also working on a um, fleet combat game as well, which will link Drop Zone with the fleet combat game. In that game, this particular ship, the Strike Carrier, is quite small. It's frigate sized. The miniature is about this big or so. And the battleship is about that. So, to give you an idea of scale, it gives players a really nice, tangible link between the two. So, no plans to make a battleship at that scale? <laughs> no. The number of people that have asked me, I'm like, I'm, I'm never going to do this again. It took me over a thousand hours to build this thing from design through to completion. It's all totally bespoke custom resin throughout. Uh, it's a monster. No. I it's taken on a lot of detail because I saw it at uh, Salute last year and last year it was much simpler and even then I thought, wow, that's amazing and you've got so much more detail onto it. Yeah, yeah, Salute last year it was um, the middle of the hull was finished. I'd actually done maybe 80% of the hours on the project by that point but certain things which were frustratingly the easy things but also the things that carry off a project weren't done in time and I tried my best but I had to bring it to Salute anyway having done all that work. Yeah. So, yeah, it was back again this year, all done and finished, which I'm really happy with the end result now. <laughs> um, so the game is for Drop Fleet? Drop is Fleet, it? yeah, it's working title, Drop Fleet. Everyone's calling it Drop Fleet, so it's probably going to end up being called Drop Fleet. That's stick, yeah. <laughs> that is, it's kind of sticking with us too, so yeah. that'll be out. Uh, we're working on early next year on okay. that. Uh, we're also working with Andy Chambers on the rule set for that one, who wrote BFG. So that, that's been fun as well to have such a you know, legend of the industry involved in the rules for that game. I've started doing the minis as well. There's a few of them here. We're showing off a couple of the early miniatures. Okay, I've seen a few miniatures. You released some photos uh, two or three weeks back. Yeah. So um, what's your kind of release strategy for it? Is it going to be a starter box set like you did for uh, Drop Zone Commander or is it just going to be a rule book and miniatures? Um, it, starter box set is the plan. You know, Two-player starter box, individual starter fleets and blisters like pretty much the same as Drop Zone in terms of the range and how, how the game will be. You know, it'll be a full war game, you know, you build a fleet, you pay points, it'll be a tournament system like Drop Zone is. Uh, you probably have some slightly more narrative elements as well for attacker defender stuff, which is obviously more common in fleet battles when you're playing an orbital game, which is what it is. It's an orbital combat game rather than a deep space combat game. So it's quite different from most of the other spaceship systems out there. So how does actual game mechanics work differently? Because we've got quite a few out at the moment. Firestorm Armada, Star Wars Armada's come out. How does the game differ to those ones? So it's very, um, very objective focused uh, because you, a lot is going on on the ground. So you're doing a lot of orbital bombardment. You're dropping troops in cities, you know, extracting troops from cities, um, all that kind of thing. You've got orbital layers, um, high orbit, low orbit, atmosphere and on the ground. And you've got stuff happening at all those different layers. And it's always played above. The board will look totally different because the, the table is a piece of planet rather than a star field. Okay. The whole rule set's been designed around orbital combat, which is makes it quite different from other spaceship games. The miniatures are the most detailed ones we've ever done. And we've I go a bit too far sometimes. And I'm really happy with the results on those. So are they going to be resin miniatures like the current um, yeah, Drop Zone yeah. Commanded miniatures? Yeah, resin largely, uh, perhaps some white metal, maybe some plastics depending on how things go. Um, we're yet to kind of nail all that stuff down. There's a lot of interesting mechanics as well which are very different. Uh, shooting for example is one. There's, um, you don't have, I mean space, everything's got an infinite range really. There's nothing to slow anything down. Um, so you've got your ship, the range is, is depending on whether you can target the enemy accurately or not. So your ship has a scan range, the enemy ship has a signature, and you add the two together to get your range. 
And now if the enemy starts to do stuff like fire weapons, do a lot of maneuvers, they pick up energy spikes and they become easier to spot. So you gain range against them. And then you've got things like silent running where you can turn all the systems right down and drift. And then you're much harder to target from distance. So it's very, very different from most other systems that way. It sounds like you've got a lot of tactical options then. Yeah, yeah. There's a tactics uh, key to all our games. That's the kind of thing we want to focus on heavily. You know, destroying the enemy fleet is always good. You know, and if you if you wipe them out, then you're going to win. But it's um, the game is won or lost by largely what happens on the ground. And the fleets are there to support what's happening on the ground. So it's quite different in that right in that way. So we expect to see this beginning of next year, you said? Uh, yeah, beginning of next year. Not sure exactly when. I've been saying it a lot in that we're not going to release it until it's ready. Um, it's Because there's a lot of new things in it and a lot of new mechanics. It's required a lot of playtesting. And we're, we're playtesting it constantly all the time at the moment. And the minis are, are taking a while for me to do. And I want to keep up with Drop Zone too, obviously, because... Yeah. yeah, we want to keep the momentum going there and keep all our drop zone players happy with new releases and we want to maintain that too. So we can't lose focus on either of them. But yeah, early next year, that's the plan. So anything new for drop zone? Uh, just taking over? Uh, yeah, well, we've, we've just released some new infantry codes. Uh, there, we've, We're pre-releasing them here, but they're out at the end of the month. Um, there'll be four or five new releases per faction for the next couple of months running as well. Um, so we've got plenty coming out for Drop Zone. Phase 2, hopefully, this year, the next book as well. Hopefully by the end of the year, if I get enough time to finish it. <laughs> it's um, it's going to be a very busy, very, very busy six months for um, for Hawk and for me and for all of us. But that's the plan, at least. So, yeah, it'll be a busy year for Drop Zone. Well, thank you very much for your time. And enjoy the rest of the expo. Cool. Thank you. Thanks very much.